Waiting for the green. Look at that. No! Look at that. Get those nerds! Welcome back to Bid Nerds, everyone. If you tried to get on here just a few minutes ago, uh, our system crashed and uh, we're trying it again. So here we are. Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out of the most interesting cars of the day on Cars and Bids. Bring a trailer, P Car Market, Hemmings, and whatever, uh, Rad for Sale, our favorite, and whatever other auction sites happen to pop up. Uh, we do this every Monday through Friday uh, during about the nine o'clock hour. We are way late today, uh, and we <laughs> skipped a show yesterday. So we say we do this every day, but we're dirty, dirty liars, apparently. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. What's up, Michael Deeb, my partner over there uh, in San Francisco? My name is John Polnick, by the way. How's it yeah. going, man? Part do, part yeah. do. We are uh, we're winging it. I I will say we do have a much uh, more steady stream. We absolutely do. Says yeah. a couple of uh, guys in their uh, middle ages, uh, which is uh, could go a <laughs> couple of different ways. But they we are talking a, about the internet. You gutter it, gutter rats. Yeah, yeah, they sell a pill for that. You know, <laughs> they do. And it's true. It's true. Got to get up fourteen times a night. Uh, okay, guys, what do we do on this show? If you've never joined us, what we do is we nerd out. We pick out the most interesting cars of the day and all the auction sites. You know, the ones that you go to. Bring a trailer, cars and bids from Doug Demiro, P Car Market. Everyone selling cars on these auctions these days that's just a thing right nobody sells their car on craigslist or nobody trades their car in anymore if you have an interesting car what you do is you put it on bring a trailer or p car market or cars and bids or rad for sale or maybe if you're an idiot hemmings or something um and you sell it there <laughs> on an auction and uh, all us crazy car enthusiasts are just all about it that's where that's where all the money is coming from if you want to sell your really cool uh, enthusiast car you put it on an auction site and so there, but there's too many cars there's like 50 60 100 cars being sold a day you can't go you just, who knows there's just too many we do the work for you we dig through we sift through all the interesting cars and get rid of the ones that really aren't interesting at all and don't belong there and we pick them and we nerd out about them and then the best part we make predictions to what we think they will sell for today every car that we talk about is a car that will hit the hammer the hammer hit the sound block this afternoon or this morning sometimes even during the show we'll make a prediction we see if we're right or wrong and the first thing we do on every episode is we go back and we check ourselves to yeah. see how our previous so, predictions so i have an idea we're gonna okay. wing it all right, ah. We're going to wing it here. We're going to do a theoretical show for yesterday uh, because I have an idea if I would have got these right or wrong, but I just <laughs> want to hear it from you. Okay. So we had a 2019 Porsche GT2 that looked just like Rami's. It was a white sock package with the magnesium wheels. And I said $325,000. JP, would you have bet the over or the under on a car with a, uh, a sticker price that was like 250 or something wait for a a, a, a what now a a, GT, I was... G, 2019 gt2 like rami's uh red on uh, a red white sock package how many yeah, miles yeah uh 1300 miles 1300 miles and you i said, said three and a quarter would you have been Oof. bearish or bullish i'd have been so bullish playing... i think they're coming back i think they they had a lull and now they're ripping back so you would have bet over the I would have bet the over, yeah. Okay, so you would have won that one. It sold for 335000 Okay, all right. All right, all right. so 1993 Alfa Romeo Spider, silver car, you know, mm. like 35,000 original miles, which is low miles. It's mm. the second to last year for the car, but silver is not a particularly pretty color. I said twenty one grand. Would you have bet the over or the under on $21,000? Was that a Veloce or a graduate? Or were they no, all just the a regular. By that just, year? A, just a base. The no Veloce, hard top? No hard top. The Veloce would have came with a hard top, I think. Uh, and you said 25? 21. Oh, 21. I would have bet the over. Oh, you would have? Okay. Yeah. I would have thought you would have bet the under on that. Mm. It's 17,750. So mm. I would have got that one if you would have stepped on your Johnson on that one. Yeah. Um, okay. That's a, that's actually good data because we really saw those shooting up because we saw some that had like yeah. no miles at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it seems like those are. S Silver, silver, yeah. and it was just a base. You know what I mean? Mm, it, but yeah. it was low miles, so interesting result. Yeah. On cars and bids, you had selected that white BMW Z4 Coupe. Do you remember that car? Mm, yeah. 
All right, manual transmission, but like a lot of miles, like a hundred thousand miles. I said twenty grand. Would you bet the over under on that? Oh, that'd be a tough one because I mean it's a coupe, but that's high miles. Yeah, I would have bet the over. It's a coupe. Okay, you would have won because it sold for twenty one thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, that's right there, and that was on cars and bids as well. Yep. And yeah, then, that's bring a trailer. That's twenty five for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, um, P car market had a nineteen eighty eight nine eleven Carrera G fifty with the granite green paint and really low original miles. Like let's call it 25,000 original miles wow. and granite green paint. G50 coupe. I said 90 grand JP Ooh. over under. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a G body and it's low miles and it's a rare color. Uh, peak. Was it on the East coast or West coast? Oh, I don't remember. I don't uh, remember. I'm going to bet the under. You bet the under and you yeah. would have lost. Mm. That car brought a hundred and one thousand wow. dollars. Broke six. It broke six, six figures, figures for a Holy standard coupe. Cow. Standard coupe. Okay. Had like thirty three thousand miles. I mean it was like really low miles, beautiful condition. And JP, remember we covered that M four nine one coupe? This was the twin of that car, but just not the wide body. Yeah. And that car brought 125. So that granite green is the hot color right now. That is the um, bee's knees. All right. And then the final one, JP, back to bring a trailer, a bright yellow 01 Acura Integra Type R, uh, fair miles. I think it was like 58,000 miles. I would have said 40 grand. Would you have gone over or under on an Integra Type R in yellow with fair miles? Not have gone under. Okay. And you would have won 37.5. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. The, yeah, I mean, it's I'm hard glad to we tell didn't do... stuff like that, but yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't do yesterday's show. You would have crushed me. <laughs> mm. I'm they... shocked by that 911, man. The, the, the G body 911, even though Isn't it's a crazy? rare color and even though it's a, a G50 car, breaking $100,000 for a regular 911 of any kind is yeah. uh, air cool. That's unbelievable. All right. Well, so here, here's, here's the thing I put my bids the night before. Yeah. And then I usually like at least once or twice, I change a bid every day based on your feedback on the car, because I feel like your attitude represents the public, you know, in a lot of ways. <laughs> I have my own opinion. Apathetic. Uh, I listen to you and I sticky yeah. and gross and yeah. kind of and so, uninformed. So here we go where I had my bids from the night before we didn't do the show. And then I get the results and I plug them in and I'm like, man, I, I'm not too bad at this. If I don't change my mind, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, because I yeah. felt like I was really close on a few of these, but then again, I didn't, I'm not comparing them to your bids. So it's interesting. We might have to consider that as the format where we blind bid, uh, yeah. you know, collectively, yeah. and then we read the results. So, you know, anyway, we we'll will be switching the blind bids at some point, uh, yeah. on this show. And it is, it, it, this is a game show and that is the appeal of the show. People ask, <laughs> ask me all the time, what is Vintners? What do I care about all these cars? Stuff like that. It's really not about the cars. It's whether or not you're, and that's the fun of this show is anytime we have guests, they come on and you're like, Oh my God, that's the most fun game show I've ever been on. Right. Because, <laughs> we're competing it's price is right but instead of with like uh milk bones and uh you know powdered laundry detergent <laughs> it's cars that we actually care about right so yeah. it's the same dang thing uh yeah. and but you know nobody wins we don't get anything and there's no you know supermodel standing behind everybody the wants the them to just pull back the wheel on the price is right and get the jet ski right is right. that the dream exactly. scenario yeah the barbecue <laughs> set yeah uh, it's a new the... mustang convertible you're like oh my <laughs> god, god yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's. Uh, so that was yesterday's cars. Let's quickly go over. Uh, we did have a show on Monday, and we had five cars there. We'll just go really fast on those. The big yeah. car of the day was that Ferrari 348. That was kind of like yeah. one of my favorite Ferraris of all time. Yeah, and I actually did well on that one. That was the black car, JP. That was yeah, in really nice day. condition with a second set of Speedline wheels. The old man got a lot of praise on the listing for being the owner and custodian custodian of this car, and a ton of recent service. JP, I said 75. You took the under at 70. And I'm telling you, your guess would probably apply to most 348s, but this one was particularly clean, and Bring a Trailer community loved it. It sold for $79,348. Uh, my win. Uh, the M3 on Bring a Trailer, the uh, coupe with the stick, I said 22. You bet the under at 21, and you were on the wrong side of that one. It sold for $26,833. Remember that's all the good mods? money for that car, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. really good money now. And an car. accident on the Carfax. So again, yeah. I don't think I don't think I don't think minor accidents mean a damn anymore. Uh, no. You know, if it's a salvage or a recovery, that's a whole different story. But just a regular old accident, people just don't care like they used to, which is yeah. great, I think. Yeah, uh, JP. 
we're gonna have dessert now. The, mm -hmm. the 1998 Subaru Impreza 22B STI on Bring a Trailer. This is essentially a gray market import. Came in under the show and display in 2020. This is from the Japanese market. It's one of 400, and it is their original homologation special that took them World Rally. Uh, in, in the World Rally Championship where they won several titles with this car with Colin McRae and Peter Solberg. Uh, this is the godfather of all cool Subaru products in the United States. <laughs> I said 185. You took the over at 190 and you were the closest because this car sold for $312,550. Pal a mother freaking Lula. And that is a huge result. Even, I mean, beyond what I imagined this car could bring. Uh, clearly, that is their, as I said, I think my analogy holds up that that's their 1973 Carrera RS. That's the car that is going to be the one that put them on the map. Yep. Uh, you know, we neither one of us deserve points on that. We were both six figures oh, off. Well, <laughs> I had yeah. no idea yeah. that car was worth yeah. that much. But what would uh, you compare it to? I mean, you, uh, I mean, to, in our defense, there's no yeah. comps for a car like that in this yeah. country. So that, anyway, there you go. Now we know that the, in the collector market, if you bring one in, I mean, I imagine there are people searching the markets in Japan and, and England for these right now to bring them in and, and flip them here. Uh, JP, we also looked at a 2016 Boxster GTS uh, this was a really cool car that we kind of juxtaposed against the Ferrari. I said 72. You said 70. This car brought 80,500. A manual GTS with low miles. So uh, interesting that that car has held its value because 85 or 90, you could almost get a GT4 with 20,000 miles on it, right? Mm, I don't think so anymore. I think I think GT4s are back up to the high 90s or maybe even over 100. It's, right. uh, yeah. So I mean, there's, I, there's your yeah. delta then. 20 yeah. grand to a GT4. Yeah. So save some money this is a more practical car than a boxster spider i don't know you tell yeah, me you know and certainly uh certainly more reliable than the ferrari 348 if you can only have one car this is oh, a yeah. car but the ferrari 348 is still way cooler more practical than the ferrari i would yeah, say yeah. yeah okay uh yeah insurance and otherwise okay jp last result the 2004 pontiac gto uh, uh fair miles manual transmission had a replacement motor put in this is a real hot rod uh and you and i were very close on this car i said 11 you said 15 and the car sold for 12000 right in between our bids. I was the closer. So for, for me, I had a comeback Monday, four wins to your one. But if, uh, you know, yesterday's results or anything, think you might have you got back all of it yesterday. Uh, and here we are. It's Wednesday. We've got another group of crazy cars to look at. All right. Well, let's get to the cars of the day. The most interesting cars of the day, of course. Uh, our big car of the day is a car that we talk about a lot. Well, we talk about 911s all the time, but it's crazy. Uh, we really, we kind of noticed it, uh, accidentally uh was it last week or something like that, that we no were about a month ago we've been talking about it for a little while now and this is really the first one that we've been able to tee up since since well, you I said guess, yeah michael we haven't seen any 930 turbos come and i was like actually you're right and so this is the first one we've been able to tee up since you made that remark Okay, so here it is. We haven't seen 930s in a while, and here's one for sale. We've seen a lot of m 491 so cars that look just like this, but what is this? So this is the real 930 Turbo, JP. This is a 1979 930 Turbo. So the car originated as a Turbo Carrera, which was a wide body with a turbo and no intercooler. And we got that car in this country for basically two years, 76 and 77. And then for two more years, we sold the authentic 930, which is what this is, 1978, 1979. This is a th motor was enlarged from 3 liter to 3.3 liter. It still had a turbo, but they also incorporated an intercooler, which necessitated this larger and higher tea tray rear wing. And the reason why that wing is so high is because the intercooler comes out from the engine compartment over the motor and sticks out. And this wing literally... Uh, straddles the intercooler and that's why we have this massive rear wing that has become an icon to Porsche turbo models. Uh, this car is in spectacular condition with just 36,000 original miles. It's supposed to be the first paint. It's offered out of Phoenix, Arizona and it's in the iconic guards red with black leather upholstery. Uh, these cars come with air conditioning. These cars come with limited slip differentials. They interestingly use a four-speed manual transmission that has a very tall first gear. This car is good for about 45 miles an hour in first gear uh, and makes the driving experience all the more interesting. So you have crazy turbo lag and this unusual gearbox. 
But by all accounts, if you can get past those two things, you're in for something that is, you know, it's it's uh, technology dates back to the Lamar races of the early 1970s. And that technology and all those parts that Porsche developed to win Lamar have trickled into this early supercar for Porsche. And Porsche sold a boatload of these in the United States. Now, 79 was the last year for the 930 Turbo in this country. The car came back in 1985 or 6 as a 911 Turbo. Uh, but there's only two years that we got a real 930, and this is one of them, and this is probably one of the nicest ones we've seen. And I think that this particular lot is in for a fantastic finish jp it's sitting with an hour and a half to go at ninety seven thousand dollars i think the value on this one's going to be strong what's to like and what's not to like in your opinion boy everything to like i mean how do you find something not to like on this car this is the iconic dream this is like you know they say you don't want to meet your heroes and in the car world that is very often true you get into a like a lamborghini countach and try to try to drive oh. one of those things and you're just not having a good time this car is the opposite of that. this car really this car you realize the dream everything that you thought it would be like to drive one of these when you're a kid it, the, the dream comes true when you get behind the wheel of these things oh i love modding cars but i wouldn't change a dang thing except maybe uh, change those sugar scoops to h4s uh and keep those original sugar scoops in a box and leave this thing it is just immaculate it's perfect it's the right amount of miles that it's just high enough that you could drive this car and not feel super guilty uh yep. you know it's not a car that you want to hermetically seal and put away and never drive buy this car um look great while you drive your dream um i yeah. really really want this car and i love the guards red on black i mean do you get more 80s than that i don't think it's possible no. um so in in 2015 2016 jp these cars were trading for about 150 grand yeah. and the market started to recede uh and the values on these things dropped and i would say that this car was probably worth 85 grand about you know a year or two ago but mm -hmm. i think over the course of the pandemic and into this year as you had suspected, because we're not seeing a lot of these and values had dropped, now they're starting to make a comeback. And this is the perfect car for the comeback because it's low miles, it's original condition, and it's a real 930. I cannot stress that enough. We call, you know, like eight years, eight different years of production, 930s, but only two years are the real 930, and that's what this is. This is not a Turbo Carrera, and this is not a 911 Turbo. This is the real 930, and I think this one's going to have a moonshot. There's also a certificate of authenticity included, uh, which is nice because Porsche doesn't make those anymore, so that's a nice little souvenir to have. I think this is a great car. I agree with you. You can drive it and watch the value of this car go up. JP, I think this car is going to sell for $125,000. Boy, I can't disagree with that. I, in fact, I'm going to go over. I'm going to say 135,000. I'm going to give a full ten thousand dollars spread, and nice. I'm going to give part of the uh, part of the credit to these wonderful photos. How right? rare is it? Yes. How, is it, how refreshing is it to see a car uh, that deserves the attention get exactly. it for once on these damn platforms? Take good pictures. It's going to bring extra money. I think Deeb is right. If this were just iPhone photos that somebody snapped in their garage with garbage cans in the background, yeah, it's a buck. 25 <laughs> this person's gonna get the extra 10 grand because they hired somebody for a thousand bucks or 500 bucks or they just knew what they were doing and took really really beautiful photos uh i yeah. am just over the moon on this ad jp if they would have photographed it in a parking lot in the middle of the day with garbage cans in the background it could have gone on cars and bits yeah it's true or gone 30 feet away and been on another uh site uh, Ooh. that we won't mention Ooh, burn. Yeah, yeah okay cool uh, awesome. I, I really love that car, JP. So uh, quick story. Uh, yesterday, you and I were shooting a 930, uh, yeah. 79, 930 out in our secret location. By the way, Gary Ackerman tried to grind me on uh, Instagram for yeah. the location up, of Gary? our secret road. I, I had to be. I had to be coy with our former boss, and I felt guilty about that. But I'm like, <laughs> I'm sworn to secrecy. I cannot tell or I'll lose my tongue. Uh, Dwayne Wick said, Whose car is that? And I don't know if you caught my answer. I said yeah. we stole. I said it's yours. We stole it, put it back together, and shot it yesterday morning. And I think he got a laugh. So hopefully, <laughs> Dwayne's building something like this, which is going to be really cool. But normally aspirated, right? Yes, he is. Boy, I'm just so look at these photos. That's good job. Good job. Yeah. You never right, hear that from me. That's pretty rare. So there it is. JP, uh, let's let's look at the other Porsche we teed up. If we we'll okay. go to P Car Market and we're going to look at a 1987. Porsche 911 Carrera G50 in Cassis Red Metallic. Now, we kind of bummed out because we missed yesterday. We had that granite green car with 35,000 miles that was also a G50 coupe. I thought these two cars would be interesting to 
juxtaposed because they're both on P-Car Market. They're both G50s. They're both unusual and collectible colors. But one had low miles and one had high miles. So this car, John, is offered out of Canton, Georgia with 104,000 miles on it. Uh, but otherwise, what's not to like? This is a G50 coupe in very nice condition. Um, everything is there. I, I don't think that this one's original. It's probably been repainted just by the looks at how nice it is. But anyway, there it is. Uh, an East Coast G50 coupe on P car market. Um, I'll tell you last night, John, this car was sitting at $20,000 on five bids. And this morning, the action has begun. And with two hours and 40 minutes, our car now has. Well, still has five bids, which I must have read something wrong, but it's on forty-five thousand dollars nine eleven, so uh, almost forty-six thousand dollars now. I'm refreshing my page. Yeah, six bids. So somebody put a big bid in, a knockout punch at forty-five nine eleven. I don't think that's going to get it though. No, that's not going to be even close. This car is really nice, and yeah, uh, this color. Uh, I think this color is one of those colors. I mean, it's not my color. It's certainly not a color I would choose. But time and again, we're seeing that uh, Porsches in weird colors bring the bigger money. The colors yep. that are less polarizing uh, just bring less money. Um, and again, kind of like we said with a nine thirty, uh, being that that one had thirty five thousand miles. This one has a hundred. Uh, but by all accounts, I mean these are two hundred fifty thousand mile cars. This is the perfect driver. Just no guilt at all. Just run the canyons do just do, yep. take road trips across the country this is the car to do it in um there's almost no color i can think of that porsche has ever painted a car that i wouldn't rock you know the, right. the, i mean who wouldn't i mean they're all <laughs> right. fun do i have preferred right. colors sure um you know and this certainly isn't one yeah. of them uh yeah. but i but yeah and we sure have seen a lot of cassis cars come up and we've seen right. them go from worthless to worth all the money um yeah. just six to i don't know maybe eight months ago on cars and bit or not cars and bits on p car market there was um uh, an aftermarket wide body SC uh, that was in this color and it and barely sold. brought more than 30 grand. It, it didn't sell. It went to deal tank and it sold there yeah. and it was barely over $30,000 um, for my hometown in Snohomish, Washington. Oh, that um, car. Yeah. 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 I, thought, yeah. I was thinking of the flat, uh, slant. No, sorry. Sorry. Jamie. Yeah. yeah I, there, there's been so many. You're right. And by the way, on cars, I'm uh, sorry, I'm bringing a trailer right now. There's a 21,000 mile 87 M four nine one cab. Mm. in cassis which is a, a dealer is selling it but uh man that i mean that car should bring you know that that should be a hundred forty thousand dollar lot we'll look at right. the results tomorrow just for shits and giggles but this car jp bad photos um i i'm not yeah, i don't know Terrible. i i really yeah. like yeah, yeah i really like these cars i agree with you it, it, like if we were going to drive to luftacolt next year mm -hmm. i would love to drive this car across the country uh if that ac is working <laughs> uh, he's got the bra the car bra on oh my time God, you saw one of those dude what so are you awesome. doing but I would all the crap Redwood. just goes down so, into this group like it rains or you hit a snowstorm or something like that yeah. all the mud and crap goes down and collects under that thing and destroys your paint it does the exact opposite of what you want of what it to it's do. supposed to do yeah, yeah so stupid uh hate those things um all right where's this one gonna land I, that's a good question jp so I <laughs> that is what we do on the show you're right yeah that, that's a good question <laughs> i was afraid you were gonna ask me that yeah, I, was, man. I stayed up all night when i'm like what if he asked me yeah. uh i'm gonna i'm gonna stick my neck out for this car just because cassis have been doing well g50s are bringing a premium and the car yesterday brought a hundred grand so yeah. what's the delta for giving away some miles so i'm gonna i'm gonna proudly say sixty thousand dollars yeah, I'm going 65. I think it's. Uh, oh, I think it. Yeah, it's going over. I mean, G body, G body, G50 coupes. I mean, how much yeah. money do you have? That's how much they are. Mm -hmm. People ask how much they're worth. What do you got? How much money yeah. can you come up with? Who can you rob? Who can you, uh, you know, inflate cash? I, whatever. They're just worth all of it. Whatever money you have, that's what it's worth. They're just all the money. I don't get it. I, I uh, told I you. I love it, the cars. It, they're my favorite cars in the world, but it's just something's going crazy right it now. It always makes me nervous when you bet the over. <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, crap. I'm leaving money on the table. Uh, all right. Well, let's get to a non-Porsche here. We talk, we're talking about some other cars. What else we got? Yeah. So we have a no reserve lot on cars and bids. It's a 2005 Toyota Celica GTS. This car has 58,600 miles out of Endicott, New York. 
Uh, JP, this is really interesting. So this is the 1.8 liter inline four that Toyota sold this motor. If you remember, these things powered the very first Lotus Elises that came to our country. Um, but in this application, they're front wheel drive. So despite having a six speed manual, they were never really taken seriously as a sports car. They were just sort of a sporty economy car. Uh, I don't mind this sort of you know, darker royal blue metallic paint job, but all of the additional TRD spoilers and wings and things on this car and this hideous blue interior uh, basically turned me away at the door. I am not interested. Uh, but the list of modifications goes on and on. There are more than a dozen TRD components that have been added to the Celica, and there's another dozen uh, JDM and aftermarket pieces to make this thing, uh, you know, a hot little sports car, despite, again, being front-wheel drive. 58,000 miles for an original, you know, early 2000s Japanese sports car. I thought it would be interesting to see where this lot would land, and we know it's going to sell because it's a no-reserve lot. Um, I just have to wonder, I, I mean, again, do we think this is the right place to put it on cars and bids? I don't know that he has this young an audience to find the right buyer for this car. Somebody would appreciate all these mods. I, I, I mean, You tell me, JP, do you think that the right buyer is looking at cars and bids for this type of car? Um, honestly, yeah, because they're not on bring a trailer. I mean, bring a trailer buyers are definitely looking for stuff that's special. This is nothing of the sort. It's too new to be on Radwood, uh, or Rad for sale because this right. is, I mean, this car is future kitsch, right? I mean, it just, yeah. it's 2005. The early aughts are not cool yet. So at some point, um, when the people that wanted these cars, uh, are in their you know, late thirties and forties start yeah. to be able to afford getting those cars that they wanted when they were young. That's when these will get cool. Um, but it's, we're not there yet. Um, I think if you want a hot hatch like this, just get a GTI like everyone else, because at least that car doesn't look ridiculously period. Uh, cause you can get an early aughts GTI that's going to fit in today yeah, and still be a cool car. It'll uh, run circles around this and hold its value a little bit better. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is, this is neat. It's fun. It's kitschy. And honestly, uh, in answer to your question, to be direct, I do think if they're going to sell it anywhere, I think Cars and Bids is the right place because it's not going to go right. for a lot of money. And the person that does have money on Cars and Bids to buy, it, they, they're like, all right, well, I can dredge up five or ten thousand dollars for some, you know, thing. Uh, whereas uh, they can't afford an Audi or whatever that might be fifteen or twenty. So where is this going to land? I don't know. I said that five or ten thousand dollars as if that's what it's worth. I don't. Where's it even sitting at Wait, right now? You're, you're you're right on the money, JP. I, it's okay. got. Believe it or not, it's got twenty three bids which is a testament to yeah. your idea that the right that this is the right audience for the car the car is sitting at sixty five hundred dollars and it's got two hours and ten minutes to go until it closes so i had put nine thousand dollars and just on the exercise from yesterday i'm going to leave my bid there and not touch it i'm just going to mm. say my bid. i think that's high but i'm going to leave it there and see what happens i think that's a good move i mean yeah i mean think about it bat people that are sitting around looking at bat they have literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of disposable cash someone right. there's so i don't know what percentage of the people that are on bat watching the auctions but it's a very high double digit percentage of the people looking at those auctions uh that are actual potential buyers are sitting there going yeah i could buy a g50 uh you know 911 today and that's not gonna you know i'm just gonna do it cash i don't have to get a loan i have to do anything right the average person that's that's uh cruising cars and bids uh that number the it's more like six to ten thousand dollars is how much they could maybe stroke a check for if they had to uh and so with that said i'm gonna say you're saying how much is it sitting at right now uh 6500 uh yeah i'm gonna go 7500 i don't think it's gonna get a late late uh, right. late run because that's what always happens on cars and bids it's very rare that we see late runs on these on all anything, right JP. all right okay here's here's one that's out of our comfort zone i'd be surprised mm. if you know as much about this car as i do because i know almost nothing mm. um this is a on hemmings auto knock news they are yep. now doing auctions sorry on the wrong platform guys sorry sorry sorry, sorry. the uh sunbeam i was going to go on the sunbeam mm. jp on hemmings so this is Shelby's other British Roadster, the 1965 Sunbeam Tiger. Uh, so now there's a Sunbeam Tiger, and then there's a Sunbeam Tiger Alpine. The Sunbeam Tiger, which is our car, uses the 260 cubic inch uh, overhead valve V8. That is a Ford-sourced V8 wedged into a little British Roadster. 
Um, and people often commented this car has the perfect power to weight ratio and shelby helped do the engineering on this car they did make a hotter version of it jp and that was called the alpine and the alpine basically used the mustangs 289 cubic inch and it was wedged into basically the same platform i'm sure there were a few other little upgrades uh besides the motor itself uh but they certainly made um a few of these uh jp the 260 uh cubic inch Ford V8 Sunbeam Tiger. They produced, let me read it to you. I think I wrote it down. Oh, I didn't write it down. I don't know how many they made, but anyway, there it is. Uh, it's got 14,900 miles on the odometer. Uh, there's no way to verify if that's true or not. I would suggest that it's probably 114,000 miles. It's offered out of Salem, New York. Um, and it's uh, sitting at $40,000 on 25 bids. So what do you think? Yeah, when I saw the picture, I thought it was a Triumph TR6. I really, you know, you're right. I don't know anything about these. I had no idea they put a big engine like that in them. Uh, yeah. I know that there's definitely uh, an audience for them, and I think Hemmings is probably the right place. Uh, but uh, as true to Hemmings' form, uh, they have zero uh, requirements for photos uh, and quality of photos. This is just, this is a garbage ad. Whatever this car is worth, um, they're going to be leaving money on the table because... Uh, it really is a beautiful car, and as little as I know about them, I know enough to know that this is a special car, um, but you wouldn't know it. This looks like some regular piece of crap MG that you saw in someone's field. Uh, it, you know, I mean, it's just, it's so awfully represented that I just, you know, it just makes me angry when I see uh, when I see ads like this representing cars uh, that really do deserve more attention. And if I'm Hemmings uh, trying to get into this party, you, you need some... You need something to differentiate yourself from all the other auction sites that are eating your lunch. Um, a higher a higher minimum standard. Yeah, and Hemmings could make that requirement because they have the name Hemmings. Everyone, there's so much heritage with the name Hemmings. Hemmings has a lot of weight. And to get into Hemmings, it should be like, ooh, your car was accepted in Hemmings? Wow, that means you must have, one, a really special car, and two, you must have really represented it well because this just this is crap. This is absolute crap. Hemmings, if you guys are watching, stop it, man. Um, you guys could really own the space because you have because you have a name that deserves Massive quality. Massive audience. And you're not yeah. getting it. And just clamp down on these idiots sending you ads like this. This is just yeah. embarrassing. For when, you. when the pandemic hit, JP, yeah. Hemmings got 26,000 new subscriptions for their old fashioned paper classified magazine wow. in the mail because all these guys knew they had to stay home and they just wanted to look at pictures of cars all day. 26,000 new uh, in the spring last year when the pandemic hit and everybody was like, you know, on home, you know, bound to be at home. Yeah. Uh, one more comment about the Sunbeam. Basically, Shelby was experimenting with this car. He had this vision for taking a small, lightweight British Roadster and shoehorning an American V8 in there to make a world-class sports car. And he started with the Sunbeam Tiger, and it was a 260, and it wasn't enough power for him, even though everybody else said it's got the perfect power-to-weight ratio for that car. So then he put the Alpine, he shoehorned a 289, and he liked it more, but he didn't want to develop that chassis. And so then he turned to AC Bristol, and bought AC Bristol Aces and turned those into Cobras. And he did, not only did he put the 289 in that, but then he widened the fenders, he put better transmission, better differential, better suspension, and, and, and then really modified those cars. And an AC Bristol looks like the cousin of, an a, of, a, of a Shelby Cobra, um, but the Cobra is like a car that's been to the gym and worked out and ate right. You know, it's just, you mm. can tell it's a special car and that became a legend, but this was his first blush, his first pass at that idea. And so these cars have a cult following, but they're not big money ticket. Um, so anyways, the reserve is not met on this one. It's got three hours to go. It's sitting at $40,500. I know you kind of poo pooed on these ads, but a lot of the, pleated pants people that read Hemmings aren't mm -hmm. as finicky as you are and I still think this car is going to bring $65,000 because it's in really nice condition and they're not that common so JP where are you at I don't disagree with you on any of that. Uh, there is definitely uh, the, the person that wants this car really isn't um, yeah they don't <laughs> Dare I say have taste? Uh, no. They, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I said that. No, and I really mean that as far as... Uh, you're right. Finicky is the right word. They're not as finicky when it comes to... Uh, 
the Master. ads. They they just don't care because they're used to looking at you know auto trader print ads from 30 years ago. They're still like flipping through uh, pages of little nickel ads. Um, this car really is a wonderful car. I am not disparaging the car at all or really anyone that would want this car because hell, I want this car. This is a beautiful run. Um, I don't know what it's worth. I think uh, whatever it is worth, it would get more on a different platform. Uh, the 65 number that you're saying, I think is right. Uh, heck, I'm going to go over. I thought these were worth a lot more, frankly. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go 75. But, yeah. you know, that's that's kind of just this pure guessing um, i think the alp the alpine would be in that 80 90 100,000 in this condition um okay. but anyways i'm going to introduce this next car jp and then i'm going to let one of my dogs out so i'm going to run through this and hand it over to you this is the bad guy's car <laughs> in a steven seagal movie jp check out a 1991 cadillac brom d'elegance uh this is a no reserve auction offered at a deerfield beach florida with just 38,000 original miles, this car is in spectacular condition, and it looks like it's at somebody's very fancy estate. Uh, there are details that abound on this, uh, from the 15-inch wire wheel hubcaps to the double pinstripe wheels. It's got white walls and gold walls on the tires. Uh, this thing is powered by a 5.7 liter V8. That's GM's 350 and a four-speed automatic. But everything is in that grill and everything is in that like leather soft top and everything is in that quilted leather interior. This is the bad guy car from an 80s and 90s movie. I absolutely love seeing one today in this condition. Could you imagine if this could be somehow led into uh, Radwood? I think this would be an amazing continuation to roll onto one of those shows uh, and get out in like a three-piece double-breasted suit or something. It'd be absolutely hilarious. Uh, so, JP, I'm going to let Roland P. You take it from here. Well, uh, stick around. Let's just get right to the bid because this is the last car of the of the day. Let's just do it. Oh, is uh, it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what, is. yeah okay. what's, your, what's your bid on this thing? Because this well, what is do you awesome. Think? Isn't I, this car amazing? I it's... would love to own this car. I mean, imagine uh, touring this car, JP, in Vegas. How cool I, would that I be? don't know if I could in good conscious turbo this thing it's, it's so, so nice. nice you know it how we so talked nice. about how 928s you know 928s are making a comeback and yeah. i you know it's like i hadn't driven a 928 in 20 years that was any good 928s i just had in my head god 928s really do suck but then yeah. it's like i get a chance to drive that one that had like 8000 miles on it it was like yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah that's what this car is like you we haven't seen something like this in such good condition you forget how nice they were when they were original oh, usually man. these are, you know the the top is all screwed up and i mean this oh my God, this thing is it's hermetically sealed. It's perfect. It, it looks like it came beautiful. out of time console. It looks like somebody has waxed it every Sunday since 1991. It really does look like it's in spectacular condition. Oh, man, I just want to be in there and cruise the strip and hell yeah. I, it would be so fun to go out on a double date in that car, like someplace fancy, and park in front of the casino and have them uh. leave your car up front. And JP, wait till you see where the price is on this car. So last night, this no reserve auction out of Florida was on 20 bids at $35,000 this wow. car has gotten loved overnight it's sitting at forty five thousand dollars with an hour to go on 26 bids so where are you at i'm gonna go i actually put 45 last night so i'm gonna raise my bid to uh 55 and uh, and where's it at right now Forty-five thousand, which 45, was my bid 000. overnight. Wow, yeah, I mean, wow. My bid with an hour to go. All right, I'm gonna park right under you. You said uh, fifty-five. I'm gonna say yeah. fifty-four because uh, studio. Oh, yeah. That's the studio where it's gonna go. Look at this thing. Yeah. I want to be inside this All thing right. so bad. Look I'm gonna that. say goodbye early, JP, and I'll let you say goodbye to the audience. Bye. There it is, everybody. Bid nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day on cars and bids bring a trailer p car market uh rad for sale whatever other auction site that have, happens to pop up uh we do this every monday through friday at about the nine o'clock hour uh and you can uh, you can reach us here or you can watch on youtube after it's live it's always there make sure you hit the subscribe and like button uh make sure you also hit the notifications button because we do the show live for some reason youtube doesn't always populate the thumbnail up there as quickly as we would like and people are going did you make a show today and we're like yeah it's there trust us it'll pop up sooner than later uh it's there and you'll know about it immediately if you have the notification button so uh thanks again for watching and uh hey if you're looking for more porsche content make sure you run over to uh pluto tv check out pluto 
TV. Uh, yours truly has a television show on there that just dropped. It's called Porsche Road Trip. Uh, it has not premiered officially live on the Chassis Network. That is the network where it lives, but you can get a sneak peek of the show in their on-demand feature. If you go on Pluto TV, click On Demand, there will be a list of categories on the left side of your screen, uh, and just scroll all the way down until you see the cars category. When you see cars category, click on that, and you'll see my ugly mug in front of a Porsche. It's called Porsche Road Trip. There are eight episodes that you can binge watch right now. Uh, so please do us a favor and go do that and uh, check out the show when it goes live on the 28th of May, uh, prime time in your area uh, on Chassis TV on Pluto TV. Did we get Michael D back? Is yeah, yeah. Hey, oh. JP, I, I, yeah, didn't buddy. one of our friends remind us to, like, if you yeah! have a remote, you can talk to Oh, hold on. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's one way to do yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. What was I the... Wish, uh, what, one of our friends was reminding us too, if you have a remote that you can talk into, you can literally just say Porsche Road Trip and mm. it'll find it. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, if you're on Pluto TV and you just can't figure out their interface, it's a little clunky. It's, uh, it's a lot of, of those, content. Yeah, if you've got one of those smart smart remotes that you can talk to, just say Porsche Road Trip. And uh, yeah, just like boom. Michael Deep said, boom, it'll be there. So yeah. uh, there it is, guys. Porsche Road Trip. You know what? I think I'm going to end the show uh, with the trailer for that. How's that? So uh, thanks Let's for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow, uh, which will be a what? A Thursday edition of Bid Nerds? That's right. Tomorrow's Thursday already. See you tomorrow, guys. I love driving and BSing about classic Porsches. So how great would it be to take a killer road trip in an old 911 and visit a bunch of my best friends who love the same things? Oh, and while I'm on the trip, I thought I'd make a TV show about it. So let's drive the coolest cars on the best roads with the greatest people in America. I'm John Polnick, and you're coming with me on my Porsche road trip. I think it's just getting people into cars for the reason we like cars, which is actually like driving the cars. You're living with a Victoria's Secret model, <laughs> ever banger. Eh, saving it for the next guy. I take a microfiber and I just kind of wipe her down. But, uh... Man, give me a 911 turbo cab. Because that big wide ass with that top down and that girl hair flying in the wind. Yes. You can't beat that. This is all your fault, John. I ain't no collector. You drive them things and I might respect you.